In this video, we're going to look at a solution to the exercise I gave you last time. How did you do with it? I think it's a difficult problem for a beginner, so don't feel bad if you couldn't finish it. Hopefully after you've seen this, you will be able to. Firstly, let's create a main. So we'll have def main and let's do pass here for the moment. And I need to remember to call main. Then we can define a function factorial which is going to accept some value. So I'll just call that value. I'll put pass there. Now we can already call this function. What we want to be able to do is collect a result from it. So result equals factorial and pass in some value here, like three or whatever. And then we want to be able to say print result and let's print result there. So we can break this down into two steps really. One step is to use a loop to obtain the actual numbers that we want to multiply together. And the other step is to add in code that can collect those numbers by multiplying them all together. So firstly, let's have a loop here. Let's say for i in range. Now, what should this loop be? Well, let's say we pass in three, then we want to get the numbers one, two, and three. So the start of the range should be one, except we're going to multiply the numbers together and multiplying by one makes no difference. So we might as well start on two. And what should the end of the range be? Well, remember the end of the range as we specify it here will not include the number that I actually write there. So I don't exactly want value. I want value plus one. So if value is three now, the end of the range will be four and that means we'll get the numbers two, three. Let's actually check this by printing out i and see what it does. So I haven't returned anything yet. Just to make this work, let's just return zero for the moment. Then I can run it. And you can see we've got the numbers two and three. Let's try a different number like five. And then we've got two, three, four, five. So if we multiply those numbers together, we will get a factorial of five. How can we multiply them all together? Well, I need a variable up here. Let's call it result and set it initially equal to one. And down here, I'm going to return result. Now we can use result together with I to calculate a new result every time we go around the loop. So I can say result equals result times i. So to a beginner, this often would look as though it's not legitimate. It looks like we're saying, for example, four equals four times two, which clearly isn't true. But of course, this is not an equal sign as such. Well, it is an equal sign, but it doesn't mean equals in the mathematical sense. It is an assignment operator. It's taking the value that we calculate here and assigning it to this variable. And you can use the variable itself to calculate a new result, which will then assign back to the original variable. So I think this will actually work. If we run it, we get 120. Is that correct? Let's try a smaller number. Let's try zero for a start and see if it handles zero. Remember this should be one. So we do get one. So it handles this, the factorial of zero. Let's try one. And that should be one, two, that should be two, three should give us six. That's right. Four should be, well, six times four is 24. Five should be 24 times five, which is 120. And we do factorial of six, six times 120. I make that. 720. And if we try seven, so seven times 720, that's 4,900 plus 140, which is 5,040. So factorial seven is 5,040. That's equal to seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, which makes no difference. So I think the trickiest bit here is perhaps this, but it is a tricky problem as a whole. If you couldn't figure out how to do it, I would recommend 
look at this result a little bit, don't spend too long looking at it, and then put this code away and try to write this program yourself until you can get it working. Another thing you can do, if that's still too difficult, is just write out this code, type it all out for yourself. Believe me, that will usually help. And then once you've got it working, put the code away and see if you can write it again via a combination of remembering what was there and figuring out as you go along what you should write at each stage now that you've seen how I did it. If you can get to the place where you can write a function like this that calculates a factorial and you understand how it works, then I think you're doing very well at this stage. Hello, you've been watching a free sample from my Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python and Machine Learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.